Now, there used to be this concept called noblesse oblige, from the French meaning nobility is obligated or is obliged. And this term has been demonized in the modern context, but it simply states that inasmuch as there are discrepancies between wealth, power, and influence, there emerges some responsibility within the so-called privileged classes, the classes who have this wealth, power, and influence towards people who are less fortunate. And a lot of this was bolstered and reinforced by the fact that throughout most of human history, up until very, very recently, human society existed in a state of actual interdependency and perceived interdependency. So, for example, if you look at a feudal system, you might have landed lords and serfs, but there's a definite, absolute interdependency there. The landed lords depended upon the labor of the serfs, and the serfs depended upon the protection and lordship of those landed gentry. That's how it worked. There was a give and take. But the dependency was clear to everyone involved. And even as feudalism dissipated, there still existed certain interdependencies, economic, human, social, because people back in the day existed in strangely similar environments. The medical care, for example, available to a king in 1600 wasn't fundamentally different to the complete lack of medical care available to a peasant in the sense that doctors simply didn't have a clue of what they're doing. They were taking stabs to the dark, etc., etc. And whether or not this noblesse oblige was something that people felt ethically, and I severely doubt they did, it was nonetheless present to some degree. And we can see this, I think, in many of the earlier movements of the 20th century, particularly amongst the communist movements, but not exclusively, where there was an active attempt to galvanize the so-called proletariat, the lower classes, the working classes. The elites perceived them as being the very least useful and necessary. Now, if you fast forward from then and all the earlier iterations I mentioned to the current year, as people are inclined to call it, you'll see pretty much none of that. Now, yes, there are still some economic interdependencies, but as much as we're all living like kings, or the equivalent, even the poor, as compared to some bygone age, the discrepancy between those people and the things they have access to, the types of medical care, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, well, it's frightening in a lot of ways. And I'm not engaged in some rabble-rousing, and I don't resent them for it. I simply want to point out that the degree of cultural speciation that's taken place in the last few decades is greater than has ever existed in the history of our species. And there's no connection there anymore. There's no noblesse oblige. And I didn't just pull this idea out of my ass. This has been based upon observation for years now. And in more recent times, direct interaction with at least one of these so-called cultural elites. Somebody I've heard speak many times, and I've heard other people speak to, normal people. And I can assure you that this disconnect that I'm talking about is as palpable as you could imagine. And let me explain why. Because in as much as there's a cultural speciation, these people neither care nor do they understand your problems on the ground, the average guy or the guy that simply doesn't exist within that elevated sphere. What's the evidence for this? Well, there's a lot of evidence, but let's take a statement pulled from the horse's mouth. One of these cognitive cultural leads was posed the following question. What should men do if they're seeking lasting relationships and functional marriages? And this guy, brilliant though he might be, simply stated, there's a power to commitment. They should simply commit. Just commit. Now, an observation I throw in here, based on actual data, is that in the upper classes, amongst the cultural, cognitive, social elite, marriage and the raising of children is, on average, more functional than it is in the middle class and the lower classes. So without question, that's coloring his bias. 
But the fact that this particular gentleman is completely unaware of the situation on the ground, of the Tinder, of the dating market, of the mating market, and of the struggles in particular of young men, is abundantly clear simply by dint of the statement, just commit. If just committing were the solution, none of the problems that have been discussed for years would have been discussed because there would be virtually no problems, just commit. And I hazard to guess that even the greater rates of success that are present in those social media are not reflective of a strategy that entails simply committing. But I cite this one example to give you a sense of how disconnected these people are, not just in terms of wealth, not just in terms of amenities, not just in terms of cognitive capacity and the things they can understand and talk about, they don't have a bloody clue how you're doing and what your struggle is and what you care about and what matters to you. And more to the point, they don't care. I don't even blame them. Imagine growing up in a complete bubble separated from the rest of the world. That bubble becomes your world. But when you listen to these people directly or indirectly in as much as they give speeches or enter onto podcasts, you quickly understand that they don't understand you, your situation, and they don't really care. And some of them pretend to, which I think is the greatest vice here, and some don't. I can assure you that whatever situation you're in, Whatever your struggle might be, Peter Thiel, for example, he doesn't care. He really doesn't care. Now, be as it may, we're also facing a potential pandemic in the form of the so-called Wu flu. Numbers of cases are rising. And I'm not making any predictions. But were this thing to get really, really bad, you as a man are on your own. And that's a revelation that a lot of men struggle with in as much as they struggle coming to terms with that, to realize that you're all alone and you can only really rely on yourself. Because rest assured, if there were some catastrophic level of outbreak, that all of our old habits, our evolutionary habits of kowtowing to women and children would kick in for very simple reasons, reproductive reasons. Nonetheless, it would be women and children first. In fact, women would be favored over children. And there's a certain power to recognizing and being aware of that fact. If you're a really young guy, you might not be aware of that. Maybe you think the world and people give a damn about you. But I can assure you it's quite the opposite. Maybe your parents care about you. Yeah, your blood relations. They're bound by blood. They have a genetic investment in you. Everyone else, no. You're either invisible because you're not relevant and nobody gives a damn about you, or you're visible because you're doing something that's regarded as relevant and they care about what you're doing. Human doing, not a human being. And I think we might be coming to a stage right now with the emergence of a potential pandemic and with the blatantly obvious indifference and lack of concern on the part of the elite classes that in some sense you've never been more on your own. Yes, of course, there's going to be some infrastructure that might incorporate you following the books, sure. But they don't need you, and they don't care about you. And the world at large doesn't need you and doesn't care about you. Now, people don't like to hear that, but there are all kinds of unpleasant truths in life that we don't like to hear. And that one is unfortunately borne out by the data and borne out by the facts. If fecal matter were to truly hit the fan, you would be completely on your own. And again, there's a certain power to that realization, the realization that you are on your own and nobody else is going to take care of you except you. And it also begs the question why you should expend your energy on the external world, on greater society, when they don't give a rat's ass about you. There's a powerful argument there because to this day we're told about our obligations to the greater world, to everything outside of us. And then no one, no one outside of a few figures within the manosphere says, what about your obligations to yourself? What about doing things that are important to you? What about keeping yourself alive? What about your own path? They'll never tell you that. They'll want you to sacrifice endlessly 
until you fall apart at the seams and you drop dead. And then they might say, he did a good job. Or if you're still alive, they might slap a medal on you for sacrificing yourself for some goal that's purportedly noble. One of the two options is usually available. I would simply say, in light of all the things that are happening, in light of the turn, in light of the transformation that civilization and society has taken, yeah, screw it. Tend to yourself, because you are on your own. They don't care. Some of them will admit that, some of them won't. The world doesn't care. And so it's on you to do so. It's on you to give a damn about yourself. And that's difficult, but there's a power in that after you've destroyed the illusion, after you've broken past that, there's a power to that. And it's important to maintain going forward, whatever happens, be cognizant, be aware that you are on your own. No one else is out there. And I think at this point in time, that might be more important to point out than ever in light of all the things that are happening. Anyway, gentlemen, thanks for tuning in. I'm still alive. Check you out later. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye-bye. If you liked this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.